This video is a brief overview and demo of SonicWall SD-WAN features. We will very briefly touch on some SD-WAN features that SonicWall has for many, many years, but the main part and pretty much the only part of the video will be the new SD-WAN features that SonicWall added recently. And make sure you stick around until the end, because what we will do in the demo portion, we will use SD-WAN to optimize our Office 365 communication and as well as optimizing our VoIP traffic through VPN to reach the head office. Hi, I'm Jean-Pierre Talbot, SE for SonicWall in Canada, helping customer and reseller get the most out of their network security solutions. If you're new here, make sure you hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out on upcoming videos. And all the links to the content I'll mention will be in the description box down below. So let's play with SD-WAN now. SD-WAN is made of multiple features, and like I mentioned, there are many that we've been doing for several years, so I'm not going to talk much about them other than pretty much uh, name drop them here, so if you are looking for them, we've been doing them for many years. So you can connect multiple internet lines, two, three, four, five internet lines if you want. We do have all the multi-WAN features where you can just load balance them, or fit basic failover, or ratio like send twice as much traffic on this, this one versus this one. Uh, there is also interface overflow so load the first one then move on to the second and so forth you can also top it off with bandwidth management like maximum bandwidth minimum bandwidth guaranteed uh, high priority low priority you can apply those to policies to network you can apply them uh, to application to categories of website uh, so those are all there and you also have application based routing policy based routing so those are all sd1 features that we do have for many many years all those multi one features work very well but i do see personally two places where sd1 can help them for instance what if your internet line does not go down but start working very very badly like very high latency high jitter the firewall is not going to do a one fell over because it's not failed, right? It still works. Pings go through, but instead of being 15 milliseconds, it's 5, 1500 millisecond. So things will work very badly and the firewall is not going to do anything about it. So that's the first place where SD-WAN comes into play. And the second one is what if the best internet line you think you have is not really the best one? Because many will say, well, one gig internet line is better than 200 meg internet line. Yes, it's faster, but it's not quicker. So the best internet line you think you have may not be the best. So this is again another area where SD-WAN come into play. So today I'll have two demos for you about the new SD-WAN features. The first one will be with Office 365. So we will set a probe, so we will monitor Office 365 through both internet lines I have in the lab right there, and we will look for latency, jitter, packet loss, and we will ensure to use the best internet line to reach Office 365. And if the monitored metric, latency, jitter, packet loss, go beyond the threshold we've set, we will simply stop using one internet line and move everything to another internet line. The second area where I love SD-WAN is to replace expensive lease line like MPLS. So we will do multiple VPNs between two firewalls using multiple ISPs. And just like we did with Office 365, we will monitor latency, jitter, and packet loss across all those VPN. And if those metrics are changing, like an increase in jitter for one VPN, we'll simply stop processing traffic through it and just use the new best VPN that we have. So that is a way to get MPLS-like type of performance for a fraction of the price. Okay, so enough talking for now. Let's look at the setup we have. So we move on to the demo portion. So here we do have the remote office. As you can see, got a VoIP phone and a Gen 7 TZ firewall. Two internet line, blue internet and white internet line going to the head office firewall, which also has blue internet line and uh, white internet and a head office VoIP phone. We will do two VPNs between both offices using both ISPs and VoIP will use that VPN to call the other phone. And here I do have three network cables. As you can see, the third one is a WAN emulator. So that is allowing me to increase latency and jitter as I want. So we'll use, we'll make a call. We'll see which VPN it used. Then I will increase latency on that VPN. We'll see VoIP being rerouted to another VPN. But first, let's look at the config I've done here. The first thing we have is a metrics that I've set for VoIP traffic. 
So as you can see, I've just put numbers here. I said I want 100 milliseconds of latency, 30 milliseconds of jitter, and I haven't touched on uh, packet loss. But here I just recommend that you look at your VoIP manufacturer and provider for what they recommend for latency, jitter, and packet loss. Here again, it's just random numbers I've picked. The next thing we do have is we can look at how is the status of those metrics. See, we have VPN and VPN2. So we see that I do have some jitter in place, some latency different for both links. So it's a nice place where we can monitor and see what's going on. And the next place we can see is where we see which internet line, or in my case, in that case, is which VPN qualifies. See, currently both do qualify to process traffic. So both have a latency and jitter under the threshold I've set. Okay, and now let's place a phone call. So take the phone. So head office phone is ringing. And I will put myself on hold so I get a constant stream of audio. See, we do have an amazing on old music right now. So as you can see, I'm using VPN number two right now. We can see this using the monitor function of SD1. So now let me let me go into the WAN emulator and increase latency on the second ISP. Let's move it from 200, from 20 to 200. And now. As you can see, the VoIP traffic haven't glitched a single second or even cut. So my VoIP phone, my VoIP call remain active. And as you can see here now, everything moved to my VPN number one. And the cool thing, we can also go back where I showed you where we can look which uh, VPN qualifies and we see VPN Two doesn't qualify anymore, only VPN one qualify. And we can see my, my latency went through the roof at slightly over 400, because I've put 200, so 200 one way, 200 the other way. If you do the math, that's 400. Finally, we can also use SD1 for pretty much any internet traffic. So here, what a better example to use than Office 365. So we will optimize our traffic with SD1 for Office 365. So let's briefly look at the setup and then simply give it a try. So the first thing we will do is to create an object that contain all the Microsoft Office 365 application we want to use. So we'll simply throw in there email, OneDrive, SharePoint, Teams, and all the one you want. Next, we will set a probe for outlook.office365.com on TCP port 443. And here we can see latency, jitter, and packet loss for our probe using both internet line that we have. Next is to set the maximum latency, jitter, and packet loss we want for this probe. And here I found an article on Microsoft that mentioned that Microsoft recommend a maximum of 60 milliseconds of latency, 15 milliseconds of jitter, and 0.1% of packet loss between the edge of your network and them. So we will input the exact same numbers. And as you can see, both internet lines currently qualify for what we've set to probe Office 365. And finally, we set our route to route all SD1 traffic for Office 365 application to use the best route to reach Office 365 servers. And that one is quite a mouthful, SD1 application based routing. That one alone worth a raise. I mean, you can go see your boss and say, hey boss, uh, yeah, we've moved stuff to Office 365 and then we use the firewall to do SD1 application based routing to optimize Office 365 traffic. And that one took me a few cuts as well to do it right. And now let's generate traffic with Microsoft Teams. As you can see, the firewall is currently using both internet lines simply because both do qualify. Small side note here, if you remember in application control, I only selected Office 365 application. I did not select anything for DNS, but application control and SD1 are smart enough to realize that this is a DNS request for Office 365. So then it also falls into the same application control. So that's pretty smart. So now let's increase jitter and latency to 100 millisecond of latency and 50 millisecond of jitter. In here, as you can expect, the graph did adjust based on the latency and jitter I've input in there. And now let's generate some team traffic again. 
And as you can see, we are now only using X2 interface. All the traffic goes out through this interface now. And this is because as you can see, X1 does not qualify anymore. And of course, the same principle can apply to other application. I'm sure you, plenty of you are heavy Zoom user nowadays, so you could use SD1 to optimize your Zoom traffic because the way Zoom works is your audio and video stream is all sent to their server, so therefore it's a good idea to do probes of Zoom server to ensure you always send your audio and video stream to the best link that has the lowest latency and jitter. Thanks for watching. I hope you appreciated that video. If you do have any questions, please feel free to reach out to your local SonicWall team. And if you don't know who they are, please feel free to ping me. I'll be happy to introduce you to them. And now that you do want SD1 in your network, have a look in the description box down below. Very soon I'll be posting a detailed technical video that will show every single step I took to set everything here. So thanks for watching and see you in the next one.